Hey everyone, and welcome back to part 15 of Let's Clone a Pokemon Game. In this tutorial, we're going to be going over how, how to actually display the monsters on screen once we enter a battle. So, once we enter the battle, we want to display the stats of the monster itself, or just its name, uh, HP, and whatnot. And then, you know, want to display the image for the actual monster itself. And we'll go over the animation and stuff later for that. But right now, we're just setting up the basic way to do that. So once we start walking we enter in, usually we get to a screen that, you know, doesn't have anything on it. So that's what we're going to be setting up today. Just a basic way to display the stuff on screen, depending on what monster you run into. So in the last tutorial we randomized, you know, which enemy monster displays when we're walking through grass. And so we actually want to display that enemy monster that we choose on screen for that battle. And I guess we'll get right to it. First thing you're going to want to do is jump into your player stats script. We're going to be jumping between two different scripts for this. Just because once we're, our, both our scripts are separated for when we're actually getting into battle and when we're actually calculating the battle. Just so we don't have too much code in one place. So in order to call the script that we need to call, which will be the uh, monster randomization, we're going to need to access the script, or we need to call the script from this script to the other script. So in order to access that script, we need to use this simple variable. Now you can name this whatever you want, I just called this main script, and it's referencing off main. I probably shouldn't have made it main because main is used for other things as well, but I guess this works just fine for now. So whatever you named your script that you actually have your monster generation code in, that's the one you want to name it. So mine is just main. So now we'll scroll down and I'll show you where to actually call this. So in our enter combat, when we actually start combat, we want to call that randomized monster. So we just do main script, so the name of that variable, dot randomize monster. So what it's going to do is it's going to grab the script that's referencing off that variable and it'll call a function inside of there. So in our main, we scroll down, we have the randomized monster in here. Now if we were normally trying to call it with just this script, it wouldn't access it. It's just looking for scripts within this script itself. You could also use send message if the script you're working with is attached to, you know, the same object. But I have two different objects that I'm referencing from. So we're going to have to leave it like this. So this is the only piece of code you need in this script. And this is pretty much so we don't have to tap R to randomize the monster. It'll do it on its own once combat starts. And so we'll jump over to main real quick. Actually, before that, you do want to do one more thing. You want to go where your actual script is. Let's see here. Player and main script for that variable. You actually want to drag and drop the object that has a script you're trying to reference onto it and my main got applied right there because that variable will look for that one and that's all you need for that and I guess one more thing or I might explain this and then we'll jump over and actually fix this error that we have but we're gonna wanna use this piece of code again and we use this piece of code in previous tutorials in order to access variables from a different script so we just set this up just do other and then, you know, the name of the script, other game object defined, the game object that the script is on, which is our player, and player stats for that. So we've already gone over this, just explaining again real quick. And now what we want to do with this, or why we're setting this up, is because we want to access the variable from the player stats script. So we're kind of jumping back and forth for this tutorial. So if we scroll up, let's see, is in combat is this variable. So when we enter combat, we change is in combat to true. Now this allows us to, you know, start combat and do everything like that. So we're going to be referencing off this variable for a couple different things once we're done with battle, so we can control our character again. But we'll also be changing up a few other things like is moving and stuff. I'm kind of thinking about setting up a global variable for all that, whether we're in combat or not, you know, just not using is moving just reference off of is in combat so we might tr change that later but for now just to 
make it easier for people. We'll just divide these up so people can understand a little bit more. So that is the variable we're going to be accessing. So if this is true, then we want to display on screen two different things. Actually, we're going to want to display a little bit more, but for now, I just have this set up. We'll change it in a bit, though. But we want to do a GUI label. And what we're going to be displaying is our enemy monster, so the monster that we randomly chose. We want to display their name, so enemy monster dot name. And where I get the dot name from is actually in the monster class where we have our name right there as a string. So that will be displaying there for that label. And we're also going to want to do a GUI draw texture. Now what this will do is actually display the image on screen for each monster. Now we haven't added this yet, so we actually have to go in and add this real quick. Now I may warn that I think this does erase your previous monsters that you might have created, so we might have to redo this. And you want to make this of type texture 2D. Not sure if that has to be... Okay, just like that. Save that out, and we can go check if all our monsters are gone or not. I guess it's not too much of a big deal. Monster equipped. Enemy monster. Oh, all monsters. So I guess they didn't get erased. They just added the image. And this is where we can actually add our images here. So I'm just going to be using placeholder. And now I'm just going to be placing these, I guess, for monsters that are common. I guess it doesn't really matter because it'll be displaying the name. But we're just going to do this for the first five monsters since those are the only ones that can spawn. So I'm just placing random ones. We'll still get the name pop up there so you don't have to worry about that. Jump back into our code real quick. So that's pretty much all we need to do to actually set up this monster. We're not going to need this piece of code anymore. That was just for testing to randomize our monster. Now our code should do it all on its own. And I believe that's all we need for that. So we can actually go in and test it and see if we have any issues with that. Hopefully we don't run into any major issues, but we shall see. So there we go. Monster 5, and it shows our little image here of our monster. Now we can do this again. Hopefully we'll get Monster 3 or something. Something else more random. Monster 4, it still has the same image, but it's actually a different monster than what was displayed. And that's the basic way of getting that set up. Now, we could go back and actually add in some other stuff. We could copy that, or we don't have to copy it. It's all up to preference. You could just add on to this if you really wanted to. But I think we'll just make something separate here. Now, what we'll do is we'll drop this down a little bit lower. So we'll say 60. This I'll change to maybe 90, and that should be fine. And now we want to access some different variables. So in our monster, we also created some other stats here. And we could do something like base HP and cur HP. We could display both those if we wanted to. So we could do dot base HP plus. Then we can do a dash if we wanted to plus enemy monster dot cur HP. and hit control s to save now what what we'll be doing later is actually keeping track of all these numbers to make sure that our monsters hp doesn't go over the maximum and we'll also be adding more than just text here since we do not or we do want displayed text but we also want a bar that can adjust you know when the health goes down or higher or whatever and so we'll be adding that in later but just for a quick reference just to see what it does we can go try this out again. Actually see if it displays something different. Oh. Let's see here. Oh, that's why. I was adjusting 
the wrong thing. So we actually want to adjust this 10 and we'll do 150 for that. Walk around a little bit. And there we go. Monster 2 out of 0. Let's go look at Monster 4 real quick. And we have 2 out of 0. Now both these numbers will have to be the same when you do start. And this isn't even, none of these are the correct numbers. I pretty much just spammed whatever numbers I hit on the keyboard to get all these different variations, as you can see here. But they do display accurately on here. So we could, you know, I don't know if it'll update in real time. I doubt it will. Nope. But yeah, you just want to adjust those to be what you want according to, you know, what your charts say or what, how you want to set that up. So this was just a basic tutorial on how to set that up. Um, we'll be going in and actually adding attacks for, you know, our monsters and enemy monsters in the future. And we'll have to work on some basic AI and different stuff like that but at least we have somewhat of a simple battle system starting and going. We'll also have to add something for our own monster, but that we'll get into our inventory and stuff like that later. But yeah, stay tuned, guys.